Alors, bonsoir tout le monde, euh, bienvenue. Good evening everyone and welcome to this uh, regular beginning of the City Council of Dieppe on April the 12th. Not much to say about the word of uh, opening without any very delay, dear colleagues. Let's have the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So we have a quorum. Everyone is present tonight. Any conflict of interest to be uh, declared? Nothing. Thank you. Let's continue with the adoption of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cadet, that we approve the adoption as presented. Any questions? No questions. All those in favor of adopting the agenda say yes. Contrary reminded nay. The ad agenda is adopted as presented. And we'll proceed immediately to item 7, 7.1. Inquiries by council uh, members to the Kodiak uh, Regional CMP representative, Inspector Cholette. Good evening, Monsieur Cholette. Good evening, Your Worship and members of council. Good evening. Is there any questions for Mr. Cholette from the councillors on this night? Mr. Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, Mr. Cholette. Once again, a question, a question of speed. It was reported that on my street in Dieppe, the people drive very fast, especially at night, and especially on Friday night. We don't know if the people are coming from, from a liquor a, a store of some kind but they go very fast and people have a hard time to leave their yard. So I would appreciate if you could uh, go and make some checkup from time to time in my area. With the nice weather and the reopening of the golf course, it would be a good idea. So I'll uh, make note, Mr. Thibodeau, of what you said. Thank you. I don't see anyone else. Unless you have something else to tell, it, tell us. Just want to mention the last meeting of March 22nd, Councillor Brito mentioned the corner of Gaspé and at the corner of the College Street. Since then, we increased our presence in that area, including myself. Because I like to see what is happening uh, personally, and as I said earlier, we install our uh, 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 item that is 24 over 24. We did not detect anyone. It seems we're never in the right place at the right time, but we'll continue to check on that corner because uh, it's it's like a real nice racetrack, college down to the restaurant. So we will continue to check that area and to have more presence in all the areas of Quebec, especially with the nice weather arriving. Thank you, Councillor Brideau. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, Mr. Gillette. Thank you for having answered to my uh, inquiry and to the speed on College Street uh, to be seen. Last uh, weekend, it was reported by the people from Orléans Street, Orléans Street, that now the young people who leave College Street, they come off and they use Orléans Street. And the explanation is that on Orléans Street, if you go down completely from up to down, there's no stop, and the young people know that. So, so the people complained about that on the weekend, that the speed had increased tremendously on Orly Street. The Orléans, Gaspé, Thibodeau, uh, Gould, they're all parallel streets. They're all parallel. So if it's possible, with your vigilance, continue, please, to uh, your visit to that area. Thank you. 
Thank you. That's exactly what we are going to do. Thank you very much. No more questions. Once again, thank you for your presence with us. You're always welcome to stay, but I'm convinced that you can easily find something else to do. Good evening. Thank you. Item 7.2, we have a presentation by Mathieu Martin School concerning their thematic uh, forests. We were supposed to have Joël and Shani, but uh, they were replaced by Daniel and Daniel. Bonjour et Monsieur Arsenault, bonsoir et bienvenue au Conseil municipal. Mr. Bourgeois, Mr. Arsenault, welcome. Thank you, Your Worship and Counselors. Je regrette on est on est moins jeunes et euh, que les les jeunes pré présentatrices qui étaient prévues ce soir. Alors, on va essayer de faire la job Daniel. Ladies who were supposed to be here tonight, but we'll try to do the job. Merci. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Est-ce que la présentation qu'on a envoyée va être affichée ou je dois la... What the uh, presentation that I send, will it be uh, posted or must I share myself? Ah, okay. It's coming, it's coming. Je vais vous remercier de prendre le temps de, de nous écouter. Time, puis, take uh, the time bon, moi, je me présente. Je m'appelle Daniel Bourgeois. I'm Daniel Bourgeois. Wait, wait. It's up to you to share ah. it from Zoom. Il n'y a pas de quoi. There's nothing to it. One moment, please. It's coming. There. Can you see it? Yes. You see Mathieu Martin, almost 50 years? Yes. Okay. Shortly. Donc, ça. Moi, je me présente. Je m'appelle Daniel Bourgeois. Je suis directeur adjoint à l'école Mathieu Martin. Un des directeurs adjoints. On est une équipe de cinq quand même. We're a team of five, five assistant principal. I joined Daniel Sonneau, who is a teacher. And we are trying to realize a project at school. Well, it goes within the 50 years of Mathieu Martin School. You probably know the school. Well, shortly celebrate 50. The anniversary. We'll have the 50th uh, graduation next year. And we want to celebrate the 50 years by reinventing us as a school. And we have two special projects that are underway. We wanted to share them with you because we thought it was important that you know the nice realization happening at the school. We have two projects presently that are under realization for one year. We have a thematic forest. We can call it outside classes two outside classes that are becoming real It's a place where there's teaching, uh, speakers are invited, and there was, uh, we uh, foresee music, uh, theater, and ecological uh, exploration, discovery for the teach for the students. It would be a shared space as much with the citizens of the city as the students from Mathieu Martin and the Carrefour de l'Acadie, which is right beside. We have a project that we call the Inside Yard. Or the enclave uh, 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 court where there would be teachers uh, explain a little bit. There would be teachers also. But opportunities of identity, uh, building, school inclusion, sensitization, awareness, and reconciliation also. And a space where there could be shows being shown. For the thematic. On a Further, un plan qui, qui va être uh, bientôt. Mais vous avez quelques images. We have a plan. You have a few images here of what we're talking about. On parle ici de croisés avec des sentiers, des ponts qui seront construits. Et dans la phase de la réalisation du projet, on a des sentiers. On aurait des lumières et du son pour des trails. We would have sound for the conferences for the night and for the speakers during the day. On a également des classes extérieures avec éventuellement des classes would eventually spaces, uh, blackboard, and kind of a stage that is already there with cement block. You see the plan here, but you might not. That is at the bottom of the picture. We have a trail that goes around the school. 
and it goes to a downtown, and we have a trailer that goes towards the forest, and the Sir Sedon will explain, I believe, the different phases of realization for the project, and you'll be in a better position to understand what has been done and what is left to be done. Thank you, Daniel. First of all, thank you once again for receiving us for this presentation. So maybe one thing to mention on the image that you see, I don't have the control, but if not on the bottom of the project where the trails are, it's the trails of the city of Dieppe. It's maintained by the city of Dieppe. So when we put a natural appendix, the trail of the city of Dieppe, we met your team. I talked through Mr. Luc Richard and Mr. Bujot. We met several people from your organization. And of course, when we look at that, uh, when it looked, I wouldn't say an eventual partnership, but some people use your trail and they happen to turn left. So we have a lot of people, 30, uh, uh, all, all uh, golden age, and they walk in the trail. And as Daniel showed, the yellow part was completed. It's just a matter of uh, uh, adding uh, furniture. It was built by the students. There's 50 pairs of hand to uh, express the 50 years of existing. They came, we cleaned uh, the trails, we put some crushed on, similar to Rotary Park. We see here the students or the parents at work. It was really a fantastic experience for the youth. And you know that the school does not meet the need of everybody. But when some people are in a classroom for a long time to be outside, we can teach them history or geometry or geography to do uh, work like this, it, boys or girls. It was a nice experience. We wanted to continue. And COVID uh, does not allow us to have the personal uh, relationship that we would like to have if you look uh, on the left, uh, handicap, Mr. Barker came to address the students. We wish that it would continue because the students in a hundred students class, 10 or 15 open up their inside beauty through drama. And we don't uh, deal with that aspect of life through COVID out of 200 students at uh, 50 feels like singing or if it's something natural to create here. So we have a video, we created a video for you. Mike Barker came to address them. And try to start the video. Because the PowerPoint that I have, the video is not active. So I have to see if it's working. So I close this and try to uh, redo the share, but with the video, I should be able to go and get. Sorry. I'll try something else here. Et là, je vais m'assurer que le son est activé. I want to make sure that the sound is uh, working or activated. Est-ce que vous entendez et voyez une vidéo? Do you see and hear a video? No, not yet. No. There. Est-ce que ça fonctionne maintenant? Oui? On a que la vidéo joue. Je vais m'assurer que... La totalité de ce que vous voyez a été réalisé par les jeunes. What you see. La vidéo a été filmée par les jeunes. Video was montée par les jeunes. By the students. The most difficult things I had to do during the year. It's not my handicap. It's not my surgery. It's what happened after that. It's the bullying. That's what I had to deal with. It was the hardest.
Alors, je vais rev revenir maintenant so à la I présentation qui est terminée. Daniel, you're good. <laughs> Very nice. Very good. That's why you have oh, a oui. big job. Vanier PowerPoint. Oui. I'm good at surrounding Alors, myself with good le, people. Le projet, donc la so forêt within our project, we have the outside forest, the one where we have our classes, and inside the class, we have inside in our school, de, de, cour we have kind of a yard par des classes, that is a bump by classes. We have a carrefour we call it the inside uh, yard. Suite, sous for that space, right now it's under use. Uh, we would like to develop a space uh, that would be uh, events that uh, bring people together uh, as much outside, but inside would be an incentive, and the tea would be the, spe the space of uh, well-being, and we'll have all the conferences dealing with mental health that would be held inside the school with the agreement of the native people from uh, around the end, and we certainly would like to make some progress. We think it's worthwhile. Could I say something, Dan? Go ahead. For the worship, his worship and the council. But you, that is not a small school, we agree. Outside of Quebec, well, especially in Eastern Canada, it's the greatest, the largest school of French Canadian that will graduate and will go around the world. What we try to do is to build that inside yard yeah, to make it interesting. We could start to sensitize the uh, student uh, population to make of them responsible citizens and good Canadian citizens. If we start with grade nine, by the time that two or three years go by, we'll bring out of Manjumata people that are ready for work, but have good qualities that we wish to enter the world. And with that center, center, we think we will reach our goal. The youth of today is different than my generation 50 years ago, and even better than my parents. There's something marvelous to make. But you might the largest high school outside of Quebec. We could celebrate that thought, and the young people are dreaming Merci about Daniel. it. Thank you, Daniel. Donc, nous, on, on cherche des partenaires pour nous so aider à réaliser ces projets ici. On a déjà des partenariats de, de, de monter avec uh, des landscapings, uh, uh, landscaping, expansion, engineering, uh, sport, art, et tout, de l'Atlantique. Uh, et on tente de, de renforcer nos liens avec la ville de Québec pour que les jeunes et les vieux qu'on a sont absolument fantastiques. Uh, Parce que la relation que nous avons est excellente. But the home and school for Madhu Mata, the seniors and people who are interested. I don't want to take too long on figures, but just to say that since the beginning of the project, at the beginning of last year and the year before, we invested $30,000 in the project. And si to get to where we are at now, the purpose for the outside classes was to make multi-purpose the uh, drama plays and spectacles, like a melody show, and things that could fit our framework. Maybe we would need another $60,000, $60,000 $60, $60, to $80,000 more. And when we talk about, in this case, of the inside yard, uh, well, to go and get the plans le, et et for the brick and, and all the landscaping. We talk about $150,000 to $180,000 bon, an hour. We don't <laughs> ask you all of that tonight. Don't worry about it. But we want, what do we want? That's a question. We ask you how the city of Vietnam can help us by supporting us by it. Assisting us towards government uh, organization, and we think of the tripartite uh, agreement and uh, the, the budget for the trails in New Brunswick by granting us human resources and material for the different phases of the project. Science, we know that there is a request for signs and signs that could indicate what the people can see when they're walking and direct the people and to tell them where the different aspects of the forest is located. We would need the 
Lumberjack to help us with the city of Dieppe. Keep in mind our projects in your budgetary city or sessions and uh, to offer a budget to allow to clean the trail during the winter as there are small machines traveling and there should be snow clearance and to publicize our projects in the different media. If ever we can create a partnership on a long-term basis, and we would be very happy to include ourselves in your program, in your sub-program. On that, we thank you for your time. We are uh, available to answer questions. Thank you for your nice presentation. I know that, obviously, the Municipal Council, from, uh, Mathieu Martin, is somewhat special. Either our children all attended it, or if we look across, yes, there's at least one that went there. A member of council who uh, attended that school. But generally speaking, we have a good uh, f f affinity, myself as a grandparent of, of a few who are attending. So we will certainly <laughs> take all these things in consideration, of course. We know how important the Mathieu Martin School is for our youth, for the advancement of youth, and I want to thank you. I'm impressed by your presentation and see the work that has already been accomplished. And it's good to see uh, the relief uh, uh, towards the administration of the school, especially. We're all uh, conscientious of uh, these things, and we appreciate very much uh, your impact on our young people. So, I see at least one light that lit among the counselors. I'll give you some space, Monsieur Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Monsieur Bourgeois, I really appreciated your project. It's it's fantastic. Can I uh, register <laughs> in grade nine uh, next year? Of course, we'll find a place for you. No, I found that uh, fantastic. I was president of the school uh, board for many years, and uh, we said we have to establish a partnership with our communities. It's very important, and. Uh, there, someone sowed the seed, and it continues with you. Very happy. I hope the city of Dieppe will uh, pursue. Thank you, Mr. Boudier. Go, go ahead, Daniel. I simply want to say that for some months we're ta uh, working closely with Monsieur Pujot and other allies in the community. We thank you for, for your uh, advice, and uh, it's really great. Madame Boutier, thank you, Your Worship. Similarly, it's an exceptional project, it's very nice. I was very surprised to see that and very happy for our students. The question I had, though, is the trails afterwards, after the uh, school hours, will the population be able to take advantage of it? Daniel, can I answer that? Ms. Boutier, I haven't seen in a long time. We've uh, seen each other elsewhere in the past. It's already used by the population, the local population behind the school. Uh, there's a whole residential development, so it's being used all the time. Before us, it was used, but they were mud trails, and it ha they happened to go through our land to enter the city's uh, land. Now, with Christon, uh, the footing is dry and people come more and more as part of the uh, walking through the forest that people are uh, allowing themselves to do. And we see the young people with bicycles. So it's quite uh, busy. There was a presence, but now it's real. People of, of the uh, golden age. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see anyone else. So 
once again, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your cooperation. And I am convinced that uh, it's certainly a partnership uh, with the city of Dieppe and you. Our values uh, join each other, so no, the partnership will widen and expand it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. So that's next uh, presentation, Community Dialogue in Dieppe with Ms. Nadine Duguilme. Good evening. Good evening, Nadine. Good evening, Your Worship. Good evening, counselors. I'm happy to join you tonight. I just want to tell our friend Daniel and Daniel, before I forget, you should definitely look at the Canada Community Foundation. They have three kinds of financing with project you can get. You can go get up to $100,000. I was on the selection committee for Atlantic Canada. I've seen projects similar to yours. So the next uh, one will be on May the 9th. Just want to mention it because it's really a win-win project. I'll send you the details. Okay, now I'm the president and CEO of Dialogue New Brunswick. And briefly tonight, for those who don't know Dialogue New Brunswick, it's a nonprofit organization that favors the social cohesion in the province. We have a vision of a province where each province uh, it feels like being listened and valued. We are known for our public uh, dialogue. And tonight, I uh, invite you on August 28, 29, to organize in partnership with you one of the four public dialogue on the theme, the future of Dieppe. In fact, it will be facilitated from City Hall of Dieppe. And the public dialogue will last 90 minutes and they will be at night, two different time from uh, 6 to 9.30 uh, and from, no, no, 7.30 and 8 to 9.30. It will be simultaneously uh, broadcast on fa Facebook and also for those who want to see the event afterwards, each public dialogue will meet four to six candidates at the municipal election from the Education Council and the Health uh, uh, Authority for Militant. And this is a way of presenting the citizen and expressing on the different priority issues and that deals with the education, the health and the community. Since uh, our invitation this morning to the 24 candidates, we've already received a confirmation of six persons. So our objective in this dialogue is to offer the citizens who are uh, uh, capable of voting to better get to know the candidates and their uh, perspective on different issues and to dialogue on the issues that are important and priority as to local governance and education and encourage the participation of the citizen. This is an important indicator for us in the social cohesion. We look at the economic, political, cultural, and brief. Really, the participation of citizens in Dieppe is very important. So this is one of the main reasons why we wanted to do this. And we hope that this dialogue will become a model for other municipalities that will take that format easily to dialogue on other issues of importance in the community. So it's a pilot project with you. It's not the first time that we've done pilot project with the city of Dieppe. We're very happy to offer dialogue. So I open the question period on that brief introduction. Thank you. Question from the councillors. It seems that it was very clear because I don't see any questions from the councillors. Mr. Thibodeau has decided to save you. I was asking myself, what kind of formula will you have? 
Is it a facilitator that will ask the same question to everybody or a question and those who wish to answer will answer? Well, in fact, I want to explain it's not a debate, so it will follow the formula of public uh, uh, dialogue that we have. And for those who are familiar or not, I invite you to look at our Facebook page to look at other dialogue. And I'm sorry that you hear the dog in the background. Somebody had decided to express it exactly. He finds that important local governance in yet Briefly, the, for 90 minutes, we will ask, yes, the same question to the different candidates who will be with us. We will give them the opportunity to have three minutes to answer. So they will uh, be shared in advance. But what we'll do is send them 30 questions and they won't know which one we will uh, ask that night. So that way it will keep an impartiality, but allowing the people to have an idea what are the team that we will be asking. Does that answer your question, Mr. Tibidu? It answered my question. I will, I want to register myself. You'll be the seventh one. Thank you. Do you notice that I'll be there? Yes. I think you have to officially register because you have to choose the time that you want to use. If you don't do it, we'll take care of you. Thank you. There's no other question on that. Good evening. Thank you. And good participation to all those who will participate in it. Thank you. Good night. Next item on the agenda. Next presentation. Presentation from 7.4. Queries from the uh, citizen about Notre Dame uh, domain. Monsieur Roger Doucet will present. Monsieur Doucet, welcome. Good evening. Good evening, councillors. Thank you for receiving us. I present on behalf of several residents of, of the world. We know that the phase of development was subject to discussion during the last uh, council meeting, but we felt the need to explain certain elements to the advantage of uh, each uh, citizens. What I intend is to share the screen. I hope you see the screen. Yes. First thing. Bon ben, je vais simplement continuer jusqu'à ce que mon écran avance en bas. screen. The first thing that is important for us is to sincerely thank Councillor Ted Godet for his uh, listening, for his presence, and for having water to restore with us realistic solutions as much for us as for the city of Dieppe and for the developer. I try to remove there. So as for the development, we are aware, aware conscientious, as I said earlier, that it was subject to a lot of discussion between you, but we want to bring some explanation. The first thing is, like many citizens of the city, we were disappointed to see the uh, uh, wood cutting of the region, but we know that the developer with the authorization in uh, an area that is a uh, multi-unit without question that elements of the development. We wrote several letters and made several phone calls to offer cooperation to find solutions sustainable that has no impact on the development. We're not, in fact, we're not looking to impose civism to the developer. We don't look to stop his development, but we look to find a solution 
that will allow to develop without adding financial costs or restriction. What we ask finally was to open this new development by keeping close the uh, croissant so that there is one stop. I show you the small map. Once again, you've seen it many times before by making this, there's a red uh, line without making a cul-de-sac as presented by the civil servants of the city. It allow us to uh, maintain the three access and tranquil on Central Street and the access on Burke Street over and above a fourth exit on the Metropolitan Development. This allow, will allow us to keep a fluidity of the traffic. It also answers the concerns of the employees of the city uh, about engineering, all the pipe and all the engineering development and the municipal services are uh, made normally. It's only over on a street where you, there is a stop or a blockage with something light, something at least that stops the traffic from going down the street. We are aware that even if there are 600 units inside of this, we're not talking about 600 uh, citizens, we're talking about 150, 200, 250 at the most. But for us, it's a major change as to the integrity of our neighborhood. With Mr. Cormier made presentation for the fire department, very good presentation. By the way, he showed the importance of having exit access. This meets uh, these uh, concerns. You remember that he presented a scenario where uh, fire, the fire in the wood, and by placing only one stop here, without the three big. Uh, could dissect the quickest entrance remains a tranquil street. But we nevertheless, we keep the entrance on North Bath Street and, and then Ernest and the other streets. <coughs> Excuse me. Now within the emergency service, we nevertheless maintain standards as presented. Mr. Cormier also presented a, a standard that is wishful of two to three entrance for 600 units now we're three to four he was talking about an entrance at every 200 meters and between the dona croissant street and the tranquil street here there's only 80 meters so in fact we're talking about two entrances one uh against the other one or close to the other one so essentially in summary it allow us uh, to keep the traffic uh, fluid, Notre Dame domain keeps its integrity and a safe uh, traffic in the small streets that have no sidewalks. So for us, it is important to uh, keep that safety aspect. We must know that the development is made without buffer zone, without uh, green belt. So we find ourselves all a tangle in that area that was a major concern for us. Essentially, by adding that change only to the request, the city can authorize phase two without any uh, restrictive changes to the developer. The developer can undertake the development without any changes except to rename the street, that would be uh, the follow-up uh, follow to Dona Street. I've had the opportunity to talk to the developer and I asked him what were his concerns. And naturally, as you probably doubt, for him and the other developers, it's the idea of creating three main cul-de-sac as it was presented two weeks ago. I must repeat, that that is not our solution. We learn at the same time as you. And the second concern is to see a cul-de-sac with a traffic circle that will eat some uh,
property and represents a loss of uh, money for the uh, developer. We talk about blocking off that street without any more development. Well, the developer had no argument against that, but he wanted to mention that it's a decision by the city. These are city regulations. That's why we thought that it was good to come back and present this uh, tonight. Our neighborhood keep an in integrity of uh, traffic. And as I said, the other elements are respected. You know, we are cit uh, citizens proud of the city as we seek to improve the value of our environment. Like you, there's several uh, citizens that were shocked by seeing the major uh, uh, wood cutting, clear cutting, and the importance of keeping a healthy, safe environment and also maintaining uh, maintain a, an ecological environment. We take it, this opportunity to sensitize you as well as the staff to the importance of uh, changing the regulations that are submitted to the developers so that we can at least protect the development for futures to come. In fact, I see the next item is the sustainable development plan. And I hope that for us, I hope that several other persons in the future won't have to live what we're living by seeing our neighborhood with a transfer zone or a green area. So we recognize the development is something we can't change. We think that to block Donald Street is something we can change without affecting the development by the developer. And we leave the final decision to your wisdom. I thank you uh, for listening to me and for allowing me to share at least this information. Thank you for your presentation. The members of council have received a copy and it will certainly be considered. We'll ask the staff to take, have a look at it to see where it will bring up. That being said, Mr. Gaudet. Your Worship, I would like to say a few words. Uh, thank Mr. Doucette for his presentation. We had discussion uh, during the last two weeks to see what solution uh, could be uh, brought. And we come back to the same proposal that I made two weeks ago. And I want to thank Mr. Doucette for having brought uh, some uh, aspects that support that uh, proposal. First of all, I would like to insist on the fact what he said is that the developer did not give any negative indication to this proposal. In fact, the developer doesn't want to uh, put his back against the uh, city's employee uh, with his proposal. When we look at the project as a whole, there's possibly two property that would be affected on each side of Dona Street. But in fact, when we close that street, it would he would be well compensated by the other properties that are not sold on Dona because the demand for such a, a property that has no exit, very strong. The family want to, to stay with the, uh, uh, nobody will go there if they have no business. So there uh, is advantages for him and there's no disadvantage for his project. 99.9% .9 of his project will go forward uh, without any uh, negative uh, changes. So I have the impression that because of that situation, I know it's not standard to uh, make such a stop. We have standard inside the city. I presume we should have an exit with kind of a kind of a uh, or, uh, uh, but it's different. It's a situation that is different. It's a situation where people purchase uh, 
an investment in a project that change and effectively change drastically their vision for uh, the property that they purchased a few years ago. So I will propose an amendment when we come to the resolution. We accept the proposal from the people on the street, on Dona Street, and that we should block off that street. And the count, then the council can make a decision on that amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cadet. Thank you for the presentation once again, Mr. Doucette. And There were several uh, different uh, pr uh, presentations, but we're in the process where the council will make a decision by voting uh, later on on this uh, issue, on the zoning bylaw. That now bring us where, no, 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 sorry. Two other presentation starting with Mr. Girard for our sustainable development plan. And then we will hear Mrs. Casey for the financial, uh, fi financial statement for last year. Mr. Girard first. Thank you very much, Your Worship and members of council. So I'm here in front of you tonight, essentially to notice the actions that were undertaken in relationship with the Sustainable Development Plan of the municipality during the 2019-2020. So we had a presentation uh, that we had supposed to be had last year for initiative that was done in 2019 last year, but COVID appeared and changed the things in our opinion. So the presentation was postponed. So essentially we're making a presentation, the initiative of the project undertaken in the last two years. So part of the presentation, once again, we'll have an overview of the different uh, plan of the sustainable presentation with directly in the initiative and the project. 2019-2020. So our sustainable development plans in 2019 to 2021. Before that, we had a sustainable development plan. And before the last one, or the one before last, we had a green plan that established several initiatives, uh, access on the environment. So with the sustainable development, as we've explained before, there's essentially three sphere of social, environmental, and economic. So it brings a certain uh, equilibrium, a balance when we deal with uh, development. So the, the, the 10 in intervention of the develop, uh, uh, sustainable development in front of you each year, and the objective uh, the goal is to undertake an initiative or a project in relation with each one of the intervention uh, item there's some years where we have the opportunity to target them all and sometimes depending on the resources that are available we must have a firm focus on some uh, intervention as the slide mentioned, the sustainable development is supported by different initiatives, community, to improve the quality and the community life and the economy, the three spheres that I mentioned earlier. So we still have the diagram that uh, mentioned the different facet of the municipality. When it comes to our uh, main, uh, main plans, so we uh, uh, take in consideration the development of downtown, the regional transportation, the adaptation to climate change, and the municipal plan and the main plan. So we have a committee that meets uh, six times a year to really look 
at uh, assuring the initiative go forward that deals with these different uh, documents. One of the initiatives that deal with the intervention, transportation, governance, partnership, municipal interference, we made an interactive map. We updated it uh, to system or active transportation within the municipality. We also have, uh, through the service of the Grishar, we talk about an initiative by a study that was done by Transdag, Transdag that studies in depth the electrification of the municipal uh, plan here. We talk about the proposal of a conceptual scenario to improve the public transport in the app. And we talk about evaluating the system of alternative transportation, such as the uh, transportation and request. It's a presentation that was uh, made in the past. So it's certainly a study that comes to deal with the uh, public transport. So the municipality for a long time, since 2016, is in partnership or participate to the partner, partnership in the protection of climate. It's a program that is managed by the, uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM. So essentially, We've gone through the fifth uh, steps in this program. And it doesn't take uh, many municipalities inside the country or New Brunswick that have gone beyond that fifth uh, steps. We were able to overcome it with the partnership of the Francophone Associ Municipal Association of New Brunswick that helped us to uh, overcome the fourth and fifth uh, step to put in place the uh, greenhouse uh, effect. And it's a great opportunity for us uh, to mention that the municipality has really accomplished and even uh, overcome their objective of the effect of uh, greenhouse uh, effect. We've gone beyond our uh, target of 6% and 5.4% on the collective uh, aspect. So here again, it's through different initiative that the municipality herself undertook and even our partners, as far as reduction of uh, greenhouse uh, effect uh, and be power that has that made a transition of power of renewable energy echo 360 with the development of electricity with uh, the production of methane and uh, solid uh, waste so you have in front of you a map that is essentially municipalities in atlantic that uh, went through the fifth step it's the red star as you can see on the list we're among uh, not many uh, in Atlantic for uh, that have received that uh, fifth uh, step. So, with the advancement of the plan and reduction of greenhouse effect, and something that was undertaken by the municipality between 2019 2020 was the purchase of uh, electrical installation of rechargeable. Uh, uh, hydrant and the purchase of two electrical uh, uh, was a safe project where the Francophone Association of Municipalities in New Brunswick and the uh, Federation of Canadian Municipalities gave us the opportunity of introducing two electrical vehicles in the municipal fleet. These vehicles uh, is on pilot mode uh, as a pilot project for the share within the sharing within the municipality. So slowly we are offering different services to the municipality to uh, uh, offer a sharing uh, vehicle. And uh, uh, before the spring, we want to open to a nonprofit organization to have access uh, for the use in their operation. Another project that is underway and 
it's been a few years uh, that we've made the project go forward. Uh, Study-wise, it's a project of uh, evaluation of uh, municipal building, and especially at the Jail Blanc complex there again. It's an initiative that we, uh, for which we were to get some financing from FCM to finance 50% of the feasibility study to see what initiative we could uh, uh, do to uh, really take care of the uh, energy project, our specialist uh, building uh, Amidi Como is really the technical as uh, expert on the project. And we are in the process uh, of making it go forward to the next step to eventually make a request to uh, FCM for a project of uh, development uh, to make the objective go forward and the initiative that I mentioned in these feasibility study, because the studies show that there is a potential to reduce uh, up to 30% of the greenhouse uh, effect that are inside the building uh, within a radius that can be reasonable if we go to get financing uh, from the FCM. This will be uh, an, a subject that will be coming for the project for a future decision to be made. Let's not forget that at the Uniplex, in its conception, there were several items that are co-responsible. So in the decision, we introduced uh, two electrical uh, uh, fresh uh, uh, roof, and it has a color that really reflects the, the light. So it goes with the power uh, efficiency. So the, uh, the power, the energy that is produced 100%, the bell uh, light, the control system, a CO2 uh, a a frigidaire system, and they, they become, uh, they remain. An item that deals with the advancement of the greenhouse, uh, uh, we make the reference and it is repeated quite often, but here again, it's our partners in this uh, initiative of reducing our uh, greenhouse effects, ECHO 360 uh, programs that are interested interesting for the reduction of uh, greenhouse uh, effect when it comes to mobile car, they're recycling the operation of uh, electricity and also the adoption of the bylaw to control the plastic bags. This is an initiative that the council itself undertook uh, last year to uh, adopt uh, a bylaw to control the use of plastic bags. And even it was, uh, it was an item that the municipality received at a price of Echo 360, and I mentioned it later on during the presentation, so I'll make reference to the slide that you have in front of you. So the question of uh, uh, action plan of trees within the municipality, we have several uh, program of uh, tree plantation with the technician in forestry uh, in, this, in the city are helping us to plant several trees uh, inside the municipality, either through the program of community planting, where in 2019 we planted 100 trees uh, by that program, 50 trees for the program One Tree for Life, over a thousand uh, trees, uh, smaller trees uh, that were planted uh, across the municipality and 300 trees uh, that are given to the residents. Uh, that was in 2019. In 2020, in 2020, we talk about the planting of 40 trees that were planted at different places in the municipality along Gillette and in the city uh, city hall yard, as well as Dwight House. We planted 19 trees to once again, the, uh, within the program, one tree for life, uh, 300 trees small trees and 30 trees for a project of uh, in the Rotary Park. A program, an initiative that we undertook with the municipality of Moncton with a student, master's degree, Karin Goda, 
we undertook an initiative to help it's a program, uh, communication program, more or less. Uh, the objective of this initiative is to better understand why the people within the municipality don't get involved in the development of houses of net, a zero, a net zero. It's a house that consumes as much energy as it produces. We try to understand why the developers as much as uh, citizens don't go in the direction of building that kind of houses. So with the help of Karine's uh, with her project of uh, title to a master degree, she helped us to go through a series of questions with the interested uh, persons. We made interviews uh, with developers. We had interviews with citizens that have already built houses in the zero to uh, understand why and the purpose of developing a guide that is simple, that gives uh, several information on uh, the residential uh, building and uh, on good sources of information to transfer as much to the citizen as to our developers inside the municipality. So it's a guide that uh, is almost completed. So the directive the guideline here would be to put it on a website to work with as many uh, people as possible. Here again, the objective to spread the information that is now available to those who are interested to go in that direction. So an initiative that the council has adopted through a new policy is the question of incentive for electrical uh, hydrant. So in 2019, we, uh, we treated uh, nine uh, application for such a, a request of uh, up to a thousand dollars by hydrant, a re rechargeable hydrant. So we uh, treated with nine in 2019 and four in 2020. So here again, an initiative that go far. We talk about the reduction of the number of check of uh, fire hydrant that do not affect the quality of, of, of water, almost 540,000 liter of water for the uh, next year. It's an initiative that is a continued uh, improvement in the municipality and it, it transforms itself in eco-responsible initiative. Here again, our team of public work talk about the reduction of the arrows and the reduction of 740,000 liters of uh, painting, uh, the continued uh, improvement and the reduction of the ecological uh, load. I mentioned uh, I had the opportunity of representing municipality for the award, the price that Echo 360 that was awarded for the bylaw that the council adopted, uh, the bylaw, the reduction of plastic bags at single uh, use, it was adopted in 2019. I had the opportunity of receiving the, the award with my colleagues from the city of Moncton and review. So once again, an award that the municipality won with the Association of Pla Atlantic Pla uh, Plan Planners with the development plan of uh, downtown uh, Yep, It's a prize or an award that was issued for the ideas and the concept that are proposed within this document. So it was recognized by our peers. So once again, let's not forget the question of our ways communicating well our initiatives uh, uh, inside the municipalities that is our communication service help us uh, a lot through different messages uh, that they have on Facebook, uh, Twitter. Now we'll be able to use a new platform, Dialog the app and to use the the app Mark uh, and the municipality. And here again, our partners, uh, let's not forget them once again, the opportunity of working in cooperation with our partners to make the different initiative go forward that are important for the municipality. So 
this concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, thank you very much, Monsieur Gerard. Question from the councillors. I see uh, several lights, uh, starting with Mr. Godet. Thank you, Worship. First of all, congratulations for your presentation. It was clear and precise. What we can see for the immediate future in the app. I have a recommendation, nevertheless, that I don't see here. It's the whole issue of a bicycle trail. Inside, sometimes we see some uh, trapping on these uh, trails, and it's hard to repair once these damage are made. I would suggest that we should look in a new eye how we protect these uh, bicycle uh, trail. We have a pride within the municipality about these uh, trails. We use them when we want to promote the city and effectively, I'll take the example that I would take normally, the change that were made on the bicycle trail on Central Street. There's a lot of development that must be made to repair them, reestablish them as being uh, trails that are welcoming, especially for the people who want to enter from Central. I recommend that we seriously look at these uh, trails and to have a policy, uh, a protective uh, of these zones. Thank you. Thank you. It's noted. Also, Cormier. Thank you, Worship. For the peop people who, are, uh, who want to improve the environment, I would like to mention that the residents of the app want to rid themselves of furniture who bring, can bring them Aviro Plus on Big Boulevard at 315 Big Boulevard. If the people don't have the possibility or the capability of transporting them, they can call to have these items uh, pick up. And I'd like to terminate in saying that Aviro Plus recycles about 100 tons of material that don't go to the garbage uh, landscape and help the environment. Thank you. Monsieur Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. One thing that I noticed in 2020 versus 2019, the amount of trees that we planted is uh, greatly di different. Is it because of COVID? I can't uh, explain exactly why there's a reduction, but the previous year, I think it's, there will be years where there's a better opportunity to uh, plant more trees. So I can't answer that there is a reduction, except yes, there was one in 2019, 2020, but I don't think it's a tendency, a trend. I think that it may be, yes, in part, there was a COVID uh, as a reason, but also maybe the resources were put uh, somewhere else uh, to really focus on something else. But the program exists. Program always exists. But it should be noted, uh, Mr. Manager, to have an answer for the members of council. Definitely, COVID was one of the important factors for 2020 with the resources that were much less. And we started moving as of June with the staff when the guidelines were uh, opened up and the plantation of trees. There's some seasons of the year where it's better than others. COVID was one of the factors. We will check to see if there's other information. An item that was not mentioned, Your Worship, is a program where residents can apply to have a tree planted in front of their home. I imagine the program is still uh, working, still on uh, the uh, community planting uh, program. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. The maximum. I think it changes every year. It's about 100 trees. Well, in my opinion, that program was. Uh, 
uh, did not exist in 2020 because of COVID. So it's a program that still exists, in my opinion. We, could we have a clarification? Yes, thank you. Madame Leboutier, thank you very much. In the plan on sustainable development plan on five, we talk about the action plan. Does it exist? We have a plan, an action plan. Essentially, the action plan, what happened is we don't necessarily have any precise action plan, but as I referred to one of the slides, we use action plan or different uh, guideline within the municipality to make our uh, files go forward when it comes to have a, a partnership inside to ask for financing we do it through projects that is mentioned uh, within the sustainable development plan as an example the uh, re application for financing that we did with the Arthur Gilles Blanc complex is an initiative that is done in that manner, so the project is one that we, uh, through a partnership with the New Brunswick uh, Francophone News Party to get some money. So often, <laughs> we take an opportunity when there's a partnership that is uh, put forward, implemented, and we take that, uh, uh, that opportunity to make the project move. So the action plan as such does not exist uh, in itself, generally speaking, as I say. We make reference to the different uh, action plan for the different uh, uh, main plan in the municipality. So we talk about an, uh, an advisory environment committee. Does that exist or uh, presently? Well, I know it. It's been in existence since 2014, the Sustainable uh, Development Plan. We combined uh, several internal uh, com committees that existed within the municipality to make the main uh, plan go forward, as I showed. So it was combined through different committees to form one and to bring out <coughs> initiatives that we could uh, make or forward jointly uh, within the municipality uh, as service. So essentially, we form one committee that really deals with different facets. Thank you. Monsieur Thibodeau. Your worship. My question had to do with the committee also. I want to know, what is the composition of that committee? the uh, specialists, uh, employees, uh, citizens, or all of that? Well, they're employees. Employees, they are representative of each service within the municipality that sit on the committee. And there again, the objective of that committee is essentially to talk about different initiatives and each service want to undertake in the next year's strategic plan that would uh, that would be on a monthly or to a, or bi-monthly aspects to make different initiative uh, move that deal with different services, but that deals with the uh, sustainable uh, development, whether it's engineering, public works, or uh, recreation. Uh, it's a question of uh, improving uh, the, the opportunities. Thank you. Ms. Arsno, thank you, Your Worship. I find that it's fantastic the work you've done. I like the part you said that we increase three, we went over four, and we're at five. When I look at the picture, the, the stars, do I dare believe that we overcame mountain? I see a star. Here, it's the app, I assume. Saint Jean has none, Franklin has some. The other one is Miramichi. Well, effectively, I don't see the city of Moncton. Moncton was absent, so it's uh, a good uh, 
a tap on the shoulder for the app. We did a great job. I, I just wanted to uh, tw twist it, Monsieur Mnason. So just to make a summary, what is good is that a lot of things are positively moving. The sustainable plan is due to be uh, revised in uh, 2021. It's something that the staff is uh, working with the citizens group that came to the council to make a presentation course, we'll be listening and find a mean to have a participation from the public. So this is part of the reflection that the staff is doing and that reports to the council from time to time how to have a better participation from the uh, citizens. Thank you. That concludes well the uh, uh, discussion. I don't see any uh, more questions. Thank you, Mr. Shira, for all the initiatives. I know that you sponsor a lot of these uh, issues and sometimes you're kind of an attack uh, car. Sometimes you need someone that push hard to make the others move. And I'm convinced that it's not too difficult around the table. And I know that you are well uh, appreciated, the people outside and the uh, uh, New Brunswick Francophone Association, Municipal uh, uh, Association and all the conferences and uh, AGM of the association, we are invited as uh, invited guests to discuss uh, issues of environment you represent well our community. We are very proud of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Okay. Or is something more exciting, at least for one person in our room and one on the network, we'll talk about financial results of the municipality and the auditing auditor that was held uh, over the last few years will welcome ladies Casey and Ross. Uh, welcome. To tonight's meeting. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm sure that this is the presentation you were expecting that is uh, interesting. I'll share my screen for me. You see it? Yes, it's, it's, it's good. So, uh, we did the auditing of the financial statement the City of Moncton for the end of this 2020. So I confirmed that we did the audit according to the Canadian auditing standard. I also confirmed that we are independent from the city and also the financial statement were prepared uh, according to the Canadian uh, standard for public auditing. We made some adjustment from the accounting that you do internally, and we will issue uh, an opinion with a reserve. The uh, uh, auditing standard will respect it as soon as it's prepared. We will present the report. <laughs> They will reflect our findings, the financial statement, consolidated financial statement, include the city of Dieppe, all the funds, and include also expansion of Dieppe and management 1604. So as for the, the consolidated result, this would be the accounting of public sector following the work we did here. The main in, uh, income for 2020, the mandate of taxing or the tax of uh, 53.3 compared to 51.47 for the previous year. So an increase of 1.8 million. Service, sales of services 12.5 compared to 12.7. So a reduction of 404 contribution to uh, for 2020 was 8.3 million compared to 14 million for the previous year. So a reduction of 6 million at that level that 
comes from the subsidy to Unitex, uh, from the government in 2019, and the other income for 2020 is 20.9 compared to 5.5 previous year, an increase of 3.5 million, which makes your total income for the exercise 2020 to 82, 884,000 compared to 83 million, 946. So reduction is 1 million, 262,000. Now, if we go to the liability, the main expenses for 2020, transportation, 20.4 million, a reduction of 720,000 compared to 2019. The protection services at 13.2 million compared to 12.6, an increase of 594,000, that level. Uh, recreative and cultural is 9,700,000 thousand compared to 9.3 million for 2019 and the other expenses expenditures were 23.5 million compared to 27,000 in 2019 a reduction of 3.576 million that comes mostly from the deficit in 2019 and if we look at the total expenses for 2020 60.8 million compared to 64.1 million in 2019 so a reduction of 3.2 million if we look now at the surplus according to the public sector for 2020 so the total income we saw less expenses demand and accident according to the public sector 282 million compared to a surplus of 19.8 in 2019, so an increase of 2.1 million. If we now look at the results on the accounting per fund, I know Stefan will go into more details following my presentation, but I confirmed that your surplus of the general operation was 314,901 and the surplus for water and sewage was 189,998 that makes a total surplus of $504,899. Finally, if we look at the conciliation of the results, so the results according to the uh, accounting by fund compared to the a public sector accounting you've seen that there were uh, adjustments that were brought and the main adjustment are the subsidies to capital uh, issues according to the without revenue so here an adjustment of 8.1 million the expenses of uh, uh, capital of the operation that were expenses according to the uh, auditing according to the public sector accounting an adjustment of 5.2 million, the reimbursement of the long-term debt, that is not an expense of the public sector auditing, 8.4 million, the transfer to the reserve, that is not an expense according to the public sector uh, auditor, 6.789 million, the reduction of something that we add, but we include in the public sector, so an expense of 11.655 million. That is, and finally, the uh, adjustment of the uh, exceeding is not a, a, an expense or 662,767. So all these adjustments make such that your profit, your surplus of 500 million, we arrive at a surplus of 22 million. As for your reserve funds, the city has 500 reserve, the reserve of a general operation at the end of December 2020, the reserve was 2.8 million, an increase of 389,000 compared to 2019, the general capital reserve at the end of December 2020 was 10.5 million, an increase of 1.190 million and the reserve of operation in water and storage, the balance was up to 639,894, an increase of 18,000. 
the Capital Water and Storage Reserve at the end of December was 3,153,000, an increase of 890,000. And finally, the reserve for you public utility property balance of 700,000 at the end 100 so that makes the balance of your reserve fund 17 million compared to 14.8 million at the end 2019 so they've increased by 2.5 million at the end of 2020 now if we look at the financial ratio here i've added a few ratio that i like to look at a, each year and the members of council will see, like to see that ratio so the first is the ratio that represents the total of the reimbursement of interest and capital uh in 2020 percentage of the total expenses of your general operating fund so in 2020 that percentage was 14.84 percent so you see there was a reduction compared to previous years that is a good thing it means that when you look you look at your total expenses for a general operation of 14.84 percent of these expenses go for the reimbursement of the debt and the interest so you see also in the last few years since 2010 there's been a huge reduction now if we look at the expenses made by the city 2020 for the capital it envisaged 22.6 uh, 365 million a little less than uh, 2019 was 29 million but a good year as for uh, investment in capital expenses for the city as for the balance of the debt the, the debt is of december the 31st at the end of 2020 the debt of the city was 77.46 million compared to 84.5 in 2019 you see that the balance of the debt is uh going downward in the last four years is re reducing and finally we i compare simply your total budget of general operation by looking at the increase you see that your budget for 2021 has increased of 1.3 million as for the expenses of your budget but when you look at the taxable value this one increased by 0.7 percent I like to look at, in percentage the increase of your budget versus the increase of your taxable uh, this concludes my presentation would there be any question thank you question from the council councillors no question thank you everybody are waiting holding their question for mr terio thank you for your presentation my pleasure mr terio thank you mrs casey good evening members of council with better than the second uh, on a monday night after five or six presentation what better than uh, a presentation on uh, money as mrs casey told you Counting on the public sector. Uh, well, uh, focus Ac accounting per fund. Uh, work is the way we make the budget cash accounting, money that come in and money that go out. And as she mentioned, we made 315,000 general fund, 190 in water and storage. But also, I'll, on the slide, I'll bring on the safety in my presentation. So, first of all, this is uh, I to present how we develop, how we come to 315,000 of general fund, 190 for water storage. So, first of all, the municipality, I asked the director to supply me a figure what happens in the budgetary well i need a budget for the following year but i also need forecasts for the present year if it's a september or october with their figure 
arrive at a surplus of 1.5 million in general operation and surplus of 1 million for the water and storage uh, fund in December. You proceeded to the transfer to the reserve. I've already explained that. It's not new. We transferred 1.5 million to the general reserve as well as 900,000. Uh, Where that money went? It was on the Akadi uh, project in, for 2021. So after we made, we did that, the distribution per fund, we were planning zero. We always try to keep a balance on it. Zero surplus and 100,000 on the water switch. Afterwards, that's where it's 315,000 arrives. Well, it's the difference between an estimate and what really happened, you will see in the next slides. It will go more in details. As for the water and storage, there's a 90,000 here and 190,000 in all. So in a more detailed way, the general fund, we can see that there's salaries that were quite high of 8.8 .8 million. So there we talk about several positions that were created, but were either not fill, uh, filled up or filled later on in the year. So there's been a surplus here and sur surplus a usual as to vacant position if someone leaves and is not replaced, becomes a surplus. So when the person goes on uh, vacation, uh, their uh, uh, UIC uh, or uh, sick leave, that creates a surplus also. Secondly, we find 450,000 within the uh, building uh, permit with caution. So we budget uh, 300,000. Instead, we made a 750,000. So there's a lot of projects that were allowed in 2020. Uh, the third and fourth element uh, are similar in that. In 2019, we, we closed. In 2019, we transferred some property. Most of these properties were found in fund number five. At the end of the year, in 2019, there was still one land to transfer. We did not recognize that gain. However, in 2020, it was closed and there was a surplus of $400,000. So we turned around and we transferred it to expansion yet. Yeah. We kept it in the same place with the 500,000 that we uh, gave to Expression Dip to help them with the aviation base. Fifthly, we pay the debt, pay the over debt. We don't do it often. So when the renewal came, we had an opportunity to pay 350,000 cash payment. And Lastly, we transferred $300,000 to fund number two to have fund number two in order to be able to finance the Acadia project 100%, which made a 100, 1.5 million transfer to reserve at the last uh, budgetary session at the end of the year. These are small items you'll see that make a difference between the forecast and the reality. So, first one is 45,000 for operational of the RCMP. So, with the RCMP building was under construction, most of these funds change every year except for a few uh, lower costs, 45,000 that the city of Dieppe had to pay to the city of Moncton. However, we have not yet received the, the bill, the invoice, the perfect, and I forgot to put it as a payable. That amount of 45,000 will be found in 2021 and 2020. 45,000 with the promotional, and some people left the farm and they created opportunities that would not have 45,000. The operation capital, the operation capital 4.3 million. <laughs> Operation capital. The budget was 3.3 million. Finally, was it ended up to 3.25 in the economy there, and so on and so forth. I won't go in detail, but it's a small amount here and there. 
as to what happened. Similar to this, in the fall, the government, how can I say it? It, it the news, the municipalities applied uh, for that program. We did not, as you will see. The reason why I'm explaining, I didn't have the opportunity to do it, but we, it happened for safety reason. We give it three figures. The first one were cost. What does uh, COVID cost? It costs about 260,000 for the app. We talk about the adjustment of uh, <coughs> uh, household uh, items that we had to purchase and all the detergent and the uh, plastic things. The, the fact that the employees were working uh, from home, that money also is considered it gave two hundred sixty thousand dollars as for the uh, income loss from the arena hundred fifty thousand hundred fifty thousand for the swimming pool which made a uh, five hundred thousand last step what our operational savings we had enough savings we talked about students what is the engineering and public work, aquatic center that were not hired or even in recreation. We talk about the contractors that were not hired. We talk about events that were not had, had uh, or Macrody show was uh, maybe held but on a smaller scale. And thirdly, we had a third one, I forget. Oh. The building, all the uh, power, the energy savings that we uh, we made. So these are the, the savings that brought a uh, savings for us. So we were not eligible to apply for the program as presented. Now, the water storage operation fund. I don't know if you have a question. Generally speaking, before I go further, question from the counselors at this at this time, Mr. Boutier, thanks for your worship. I was asking myself, how long was the arena closed during that financial statement period? Four or five months? the operation, uh, operational uh, savings. I don't know if Monsieur Bork uh, would have the answer. I don't know if he has the answer, but it was uh, at least two months. And we went into the red zone twice. Monsieur Burke, Mr. Burke. I did not understand the question, sorry. Sports uh, uh, infrastructure and operational uh, savings. We were closed for how long? The infrastructure were closed. Well, we estimate they were closed then, caused by the red zone. I would say that we might have been closed uh, four to six weeks, but there's also the whole loss uh, within the income, the adult group did not practice their sports during the pandemic uh, because of the restriction that sports uh, fields were as planned, but there's adults uh, group also that reduced their uh, activities for the season or closed them down. So we were off uh, because of the pandemic with all our events, especially the reservation of uh, facilities. Five to six weeks, five to six weeks. There would be six to eight weeks that uh, the operation was five to 50 to 60% uh, capacity. Thank you. Another question, continue. No, no more questions, no further question. For the water and storage uh, fund, same principle. Now we're in October and we had a 300,000 surplus 
for the same reason that I mentioned earlier. The 300,000, that was a deficit. The number went down, it's number two. It's surplus of 300,000 here. 200,000 as to the water, the user, water. The water user, we talk about units. The residential unit. Talk about houses, duplex. Really, the units of uh, under three units. We had an increase of 275 units. I had planned 100. There were 275. So 175 more. It gives you 200,000. And a, li a little bit about the water uh, uh, counter and the sales of wood from the water source and 100,000 on the operational surplus here. So the big case for legal fare, uh, legal expense. We negotiated, it was not out, so we saved a good $80,000 that we had uh, budgeted for the lawyer. And afterwards, 900000 that was really for Acadia Street. Finally, surplus of uh, 90000 that uh, happened December. Uh, there was 45000 between the water meter uh, for the business, just to situate ourselves within context. The purchase of water for, uh, from Moncton increased slightly. The way we see it is the people work more from the house. The house was a fixed cost. You can spend as much water as they want. It doesn't represent more sales. But the contrary was happening for us. For water meters, more uh, business that were uh, slowing down their operations. So here, according to the last two or three months, it had reduced. So finally, it was a good news of $45,000. $45,000 more savings, operation capital budget, 1.75 million. So a $50,000 savings and the interest on the new debt. That 2.5 percent, and it went it, it went down to two percent. So a saving there. That completes my presentation, Your Worship. Thank you. Any more questions? Now that we're there. Now we have a resolution tonight. It's on the agenda. Yes, later on. That's good. Thank you once again, ladies, for your presence and uh, for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Terio. As always, I assume that sooner or later a resolution will come forward for the adoption later on. On that, we continue. Bring us to 9.1. Adoption of the regular council meeting of March 22nd, moved by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Mrs. Arsenault for the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. No. Carry, Carry as, presented. as presented. Now 10, item 10, Mr. Thibodeau. Questions of public. Any questions from public, Mr. Sima? We have them, but we have to verify. So they'll come at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thibodeau, to bring me back to order. I need it sometimes. So we've adopted the minutes. So now we're at item 10, motions, memorandums, and nominations. Administration, Mr. Veloso. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, for first file, 
We have ratification for various directives adopted at closed meetings. We have eight of them. There's a resume for each one and for you as well, counselors. The first one, it's an agreement in principle for the collective agreement. QP Local 3515, adopted November 9th, 2020. So here we have an arbitration rendered of February 14, 2020, by the Arbitration Board Chair by Lynn Poirier. Agreement in principle between the City of Dieppe and the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Local 3515, Starting 11, April 11, 2016 to April 10, 2022. Uh, so there will be an increase in salaries at 2% annual and uh, twice an adjustment of 2.5% on February 14, 2019 and uh, 2020 to call back to work. There was a status quo to create a committee and they decided on a mutual agreement. So that was what was signed. With CAFE, office relocation to TAP, we've negotiated a partnership agreement with CAFE of uh, $13,000 a year for 10 years. It's similar to what we offer to other groups in the municipality. It's advantageous because the head office will be in Dieppe. CAFI is a key partner for the municipality for its uh, immigration strategy. And it goes well with the image of a francophone city as a destination of choice for francophone immigration. Thirdly, with CAFI, it's a partnership agreement. Here, it's a directive that formalizes agreements. It solidifies our partnership uh, that's been in place for a few years. And shares uh, expertise with our services include for universal inclusion and in its activities 10.4 2021 service level agreement the city had signed an agreement with riverview moncton and the three plus agreement to finalize a new agreement of three years so it's been extended for one year and it will end December 31, 2021. The next point, it's uh, the future Kodiak RCMP detachment. We have a 30 year agreement with the three partners, Dieppe, Moncton and Riverview to share costs as if they were all owners without being so. City of Moncton will be the proprietor and responsible for the construction budget will be prepared by Moncton for rental of the building. An adjustment will be made the next, the following year as we do with Kodiak Transport. Many elements of the rent are part of the agreement, debt reimbursement, uh, taxes, and uh, management of the property costs. The agreement includes a clease on the residual value of the building and one for one of the parties to be removed. Uh, next is an agreement with Liberty uh, Utilities. The city signed an agreement with uh, Gas in New Brunswick. It's a, an agreement for 20 years with the same principle as the older version. This one determines terms and conditions with Liberty and 
that they must uh, respect for natural gas in the streets of the city. Next, uh, Fox Creek, Abuato, Dyke Elevation, to participate in the cost for the infrastructure in the short term that the city advised federal of Canadian municipalities to say that it's removing itself from the Fox Creek. This project will be re-evaluated by the province in due time. Next, an agreement with development project on Ale Gillette Street. The city has municipal services and uh, to negotiate amounts to be reimbursed. These amounts will be due when the uh, proprietor uh, sends uh, or decides to do it. Thank you, Mr. Velazo. Are there any questions before we read the resolution as such? And then we'll, for the, re for the reading of the resolution, Councillor Brideau. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council ratify the directives adopted at closed readings of Council concerning the following topics. One, adoption, agreement in principle, collective agreement, QP, local 3515, adopted November 9th, 2020. Two, CAFE, office relocation to Dieppe, adopted January 11th, 2021. Three, CAFE, partnership agreement, adopted March 8th, 2021. Four, 2021 service level agreement, three plus corporation adopted January 11th, 2021. Five, update future Kodiak RCMP detachment adopted May 11th, 2020. Six, signing authority agreement, Liberty Utilities adopted October 13th, 2020, seven, Fox Street Abueto replacement and Dike Elevation Project participation withdrawal adopted January 25th, 2021, eight, agreement development project Alain Gillette Street adopted November 25, 2019. I so move, move by Councillor Brido, seconded by Councillor Godet for the question. None. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying I contrary my nay carried as presented. Now we're at 10.2 finances adoption of 2020 financial statements for the reading of the resolution. Mr. Thibaudot. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council adopt the audited financial statements of the City of Dia for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020, as presented by the firm Ernst & Young. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Tiboto, seconded by Councillor Corbier. For the question. No question. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye, contrary, minded, nay. Carried as presented. Have a good evening. We'll continue 10.3.1. We have a new uh, enforcement officer for the bylaws. So this is power to put into place the bylaws that was adopted by council. We have to uh, give her the power. Thank you. So she's replacing Mrs. Melasso. Yes, this is Tammy Pulser. For the reading of the resolution, Councillor Godet. That pursuant to the Community Planning Act, the Local Governance Act, and the Police Act, the Dieppe City Council appoint Tammy Pulser as a bylaw enforcement officer 
and be authorized, designated, and appointed to act for and on council's behalf in order to properly enforce the municipal bylaws. And that said appointment continue as long as said person remains employed with the municipality or that the appointment is limited or rescinded by council. I so move. Moved by Councillor Godet, seconded by Councillor Bridau for the question. No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. Next item, 10.4.1. Mr. Milasa, this is a project we've been talking about for years, uh, the replacement of the bridge uh, on the Waterfront Trail uh, Marsh. So there's a recommended here to give the contract to J.K. Fraser and Sons to install the bridge for $71,095. $955. After an RFP, we had nine proposals, so there was a lot of interest in this project. We have an example here of the bridge to ensure accessibility for all people, even handicapped. So this is, will be easier. So there, our recommendation is to give it to J.K. Fraser and Son. For the reading of the resolution, Councillor Afsano. Thank you, Your Worship. The council award the contract for the bridge replacement on the waterfront trail located in the marsh to J.K. Fraser and Son LTD at the total cost of $71,955.94 plus HST and authorize that this expenditure be defrayed from account number 12708035 General Operating Budget Trails. That council authorized a budget transfer in the amount of $30,000 from account number 74202089.10, General Operating Reserve Fund, to account number 12780.3025, General Operating Budget Trails. I still move your worship. Moved by Councillor Arsenault, seconded by Councillor Le Boutier for the question. Councillor Godet, I wanted to mention the fact that this is a new bridge. Perhaps we should give it a name, not the, the pig bridge as it was known, but perhaps somebody we would like to honor in sports. We'll consider that when the installation and construction will be finished. Thank you. No other questions? All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Contrary, my didn't carry it as presented. Now item 10.5.1. This is a recommendation from the PAC committee to for widening and location in Lawson Road with a uh, Bork Street uh, project. Uh, this is a positive from the committee. For the reading of the resolution, Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council accept the Planning Advisory Committee's recommendation relating to the widening and local location of Melassa Road for the Melassa Road subdivision project as shown in Schedule B attached to the memorandum dated April 12, 2021. I so move. Moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier for the question. No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. 10.5.2. This is a PAC recommendation the locations for land for public purposes and easement 
for the Roman Catholic Church, Bishop of Moncton Subdivision. So this is the land in the front of Santa Hara Street. It was presented by council to keep the trail and we own the land. So it's a recommendation by the PAC. So for the reading of the resolution, Councillor Arsenault. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council accept the Planning Advisory Committee's recommendation for the location of land for public purposes and of a local government services easement for the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Moncton Subdivision Project as shown in Schedule B attached to the memorandum dated April 12, 2021. I so move. Move by Councillor Arsenault, seconded by Councillor Leblanc. For the question, Councillor Godet. A few months ago, we had a debate on this. This land uh, was under the responsibility of the developer. And we discussed at that time the cutting of the trees that took place. Now there are no trees. The developer at that time agreed to plant trees on that section. Now that it's been transferred to the city, it's no more his no longer his responsibility. So will the city plant trees there now to redevelop that small part of the trail? Thank you. Yes. We will better integrate it to, to the trail. So we'll have discussions with the developer. Thank you. Other questions? No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Oh, contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. 10.5.3. Here is a PAC recommendation, a tentative plan, Notre Dame Estate subdivision, following discussions and a presentation at the last uh, meeting to add a street uh, that's a dead end in uh, Notre Dame uh, Estates. Engineering. Uh, fire services uh, and the staff did a new evaluation. Expertise of our staff was used to make recommendations to council. They had certain examples used from the last meeting of Ajaline Street, Albanisa, Teresa, and Olivier. They don't follow our standards. Fire services and snow removal uh, don't are not in agreement with all that. When the streets are dead ends like that. Excuse me. A new project with streets like this would not be approved today. The plan in phase one was approved by council in 2010. Legally, the municipality cannot oblige the developer to change his plan when it's been approved by a former council without uh, legal proceedings. There have been acquired rights and we would have to pay damages. So for all this, uh, all these reasons, the city cannot change its recommendation and must keep its original position. We have evaluated all possible positions and we've given all the information so that you may make a decision. Our recommendation stands for the reasoning of the resolution. Councillor Cornier. 
Thank you, Your Worship. The Council accepts the Planning Advisory Committee's recommendation relating to the acceptance of the North Dame Estate Subdivision Unit 2 Amending Plan, which provides uh, for the creation of Pins Street, the extension of public streets, and the location of a local government services easement. I so move. Moved by Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Bridau for the question. Councillor Godet, thank you, Your Worship. I would like to make an amendment to this uh, resolution. The impact closing this street is minimal for the developer. 99.90% of his project is not touched, except for maybe two lots. And I realize and citizens as well know that it's not within our standards, but this is a particular case where citizens have bought some, have bought property, and seven or eight years later, they're in the situation where they can't do anything to redress the situation and to protect uh, the lands that they have chosen for millions of dollars. I would like to propose that for this project, there be an amendment that we accept the recommendation of residents of the Notre Dame and Dona Street should be closed east of Ernest Street with a gate as the one on St. Therese Street. I so move. Is anybody to second this motion? Seconded by Councillor Thibodeau. Any other questions on the question? Councillor Cormier. I sympathize with the residents in that section. I think the city should maintain as much as possible fluid traffic. And for this reason, I will not support this amendment. Thank you. Councillor Osorno. It's the same thing for me. For one thing, it's safety first. And it won't be as safe as it should be with today's sta today's standards. So I won't support this either. Thank you, Councillor Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Before tonight's meeting, I would have voted against this amendment. But from what I heard from Mr. Doucette tonight, that he had a discussion with the uh, developer, and he was ready to do that. It's a compromise that uh, wouldn't change his plans much. So I said to myself, there's no danger to being sued. If, if the developer is in agreement, perhaps he could sign a waiver saying he, he wouldn't uh, take us to court. Citizens we're very disappointed to see that their subdivision plan is, would change so much. So I think uh, we should support them. So I would support in favor of the amendment. Thank you. Any other question or comment? Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. Following tonight's presentation, with the closing of Dona Street, we would have three access uh, routes there. If you look at the map, 
we would have three entrances. One would, two of them would be used more, one towards Damien. That would be an alternative that extends the exit. And the access that would be used would be Satral and Book. And Satral for, and Takil for part of the subdivision. So there'd be two entrances used. Thank you. Councillor Boutier, thank you. I had uh, discussions with certain uh, staff of the city. When I look at this plan, not the plan, but the, the report of the PAC, Takir Street only can be built if there are 650 residents. Is that true? Not Takir Street. No, I mean the exit to Takir Street. It would be only to 650. Mr. Frenette, can you answer that? That's what I understand as well, that the developer would be responsible to build that portion to connect to Tankil when he uh, has this uh, 650 units. So that would be the end of his project if he gets there. This is the end of the day. And I sympathize with the citizens of the area. But tonight, we're transposing the challenge from one street to the other. So you're going to exit, you're going to block a street, then you're going to change it to exit to another street. Was that always planned? That uh, area? That's our interpretation. We privilege a group of people that saw a change in their environment. So it would uh, put the, the traffic through another part of the subdivision by installing uh, obstacles at the end of Dona Street. It was mentioned to the council speeding and access to people. So you can imagine the number of residents that would ask us to do something similar in all the subdivisions in the city of Dieppe. If you start with one, then you have to go to the others as well. But here we think that the traffic on Bruno will be balanced with the whole of the development. 20, 25% of traffic in that end. At the end of the maturity of the subdivision, if it comes out on Tokyo. Uh, last comment, uh, Mr. Godet. Yes, I would like to object to the comments that if we do this, if we go elsewhere. As a precedent, it depends on council what it wants to do. If council has a certain judgment, values and justice, and it doesn't hurt anyone, the question of a precedent, we said at the beginning, it was a project, where was it? particular project, we have to talk outside the box if it's a particular problem. If you say that about anything in the city, we create precedents. No other comments? We'll, all those in favor, signify by saying I contrary minded nay on the amendment. In favor of the amendment. I'm sorry, I forgot to add that. Signify by saying aye. 
four in favor of the amendment. So it's carried. Next item, we have to adopt a resolution with the amendment. So the resolution, including the amendment. All those in favor of the new resolution as amended, signify by saying aye. Please raise your hand. Four. Thank you. The amendment, is, the resolution is uh, carried as amended. Now the next item, 10.6, human resources. The adoption of policy and procedure, RH5, respecting harassment in the workplace. We revise this periodically as with all our policies. And this is uh, for the respect of people, the right to be treated e with equality without harassment. It was revised with the standards and uh, procedures. It, uh, the original one was from 2015, so this is revised. For the reading of the resolution, Councillor Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council Repeal Policy RH5 entitled Politique pour contrer le harcèlement au travail and adopt policy RH5 2021 entitled Politique et procédure pour contrer le harcèlement au travail. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Vido. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye, contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. Next item, 10.7. This is for the purchase and installation of auto visual equipment. We had a, a period where we could uh, redevelop the technology in the chamber. So this is to authorize a contract with Ivan's audio visual for $84,717. So it's for renovation of technology. So we have all the elements. So this is work that will take five to six weeks and will be less busy during this period. Thank you for the reading of this resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. That council authorized the payment of $84,717.64 plus HST to Ivan's Audiovisual for the purchase and installation of audiovisual equipment for the council chambers and further authorize this expenditure be defrayed from account number 1, 2, 20, 21, 25, 65, general operating budget replacement program IT system. I so move with pleasure. Moved by Councillor de Blanc, seconded by Councillor Le Boutier on the question. No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye, contrary minded, nay. Carried. And all members of New Council will have new toys. It'll be Merry Christmas before it's time. Now, a reading of municipal bylaws. Starting with uh, bylaw Z9, reading in its entirety. Mr. Brito, please. You have the voice. 
Your Worship. Bylaw number Z-9, 2017-5, a bylaw to amend a bylaw relating to the city of Dieppe Municipal Development Plan. Is a whole reading. The bylaw relating to the city of Dieppe Development Plan being bylaw number Z-9, 2017, enacted on the 11th day of September, 2017, fine, enacts as follow. Schedule A1 entitled Generalized Land, and November 17th, and divided in the Westmoreland Office number 3753872. November the 3rd is amended as follows. One, Schedule A1 entitled Generalized Land Use Map, whenever it is mentioned in that Term of the City of Dieppe Municipal Development Plan by law is amended by the maps to be attached by A-1-4, A-1-5, A-1-6, and A-1-7. Second, number two, section 6.1. Under the little residential area policies and proposal is amended. 2.1 by adding the following policy under the uh, subtitle as follows to further support the urban foreign urban design as explained in section 8 of this plan and provided the multifamily dwelling in a multiple unit dwelling the following section should be followed a in multiple family well, it should be oriented to have the largest building facade and the front facade when possible towards the public street in order to better define the relationship with the public domain, enhance the pedestrian environment and create a more coherent facade. B, a special consideration should be given to the architectural elements of a street house on the facade under multiple unit dwelling and should incorporate high quality architectural to make a difference between the public the public domain. Two, by objection, what follows? Following the principle 15, under the subheading, semi mural residential area, southern portion of Amiro Street and Dover Road. Policy 16, it shall be a policy of council to acknowledge and maintain the residential character and small to downtown core while allow, allowing a slight increase in residential density in this area. Proposal to it is proposed to create an urban residential zone in the zoning bylaw to guide development in the residential area beyond the downtown area. Three, section 6.2, under the leading commercial area policies and proposals as amended is amended 3.1 by repealing policy 5 and policy 6 under subheading commercial nodes and by changing the numbers of policy 7 8 and 9 to policies 5 6 7 respectively 3.2 by adding the following at the end of paragraph c of policy nine under subheading the Boulevard on properties located north of Ivan Street. I move for the reading in its entirety. Thank you. Move by Councillor de Brido, seconded by Councillor de Brido. On the question. No question, all those in favor, resolution say aye. Country reminded say nay. Carry as presented. One no, sorry, I didn't understand that. Miss, Madame Le Boutillier voted no, it's registered. And we will proceed with the third final by title only. Monsieur Brideau. Your Worship, by lot number Z, Dash nine bracket twenty seventeen dash five. 
a bylaw amending the bylaw concerning the municipal DA development plan. I move, Your Worship, in its third and final reading. Thank you. And second, move and second it by Councillor de Blanc. On the question, no question, not those in favor, say aye. Country reminded nay. No by Councillor de Boutier. So the resolution is carried by the majority. That brings us to item 11.2. Monsieur Mnasa, this is the adoption of bylaw a summary reading that you have in front of you. It was presented this class on a few occasions, and it's for its adoption. Thank you. The reading of resolution, Ms. Sarsno. Your Worship, bylaw Z1021, bylaw of the city of the app, pursuant to the uh, Power confined by the law, ANB 217.9, Municipal Council of the App, in access follow. One, bylaw number 9 of 2021, entitled Zoning Bylaw of the City of Moncton is adopted. Two, the legislative provision in annex are part uh, integral of this bylaw. I move in its in uh, reading in its entirety, must proceed with the different items. No summary. It'll be uh, okay. Fine. Moved by Mrs. Asano, seconded by Councillor Cormier. Under question. No question. All those in favor? Under resolution, say aye. Can't remind it, nay. No, for Mr. Boutier, registered, and resolution is carried as presented. Now, for the reading by title only, third and final reading. The worship bylaw Z1021, the zoning bylaw of the city of Dieppe, the third reading. Thank you, third reading. Move, Councillor Cormier. On the question, the question of those in favor, say aye. It reminded nay. No registered by Mr. Boudier. So, resolution once again is carried by the majority of council. Now, 11 3. Now, we have a new bylaw that is proposed. We had a presentation, my colleague, Mr. Sibad on the uh, Danish box on the territory. There was a pilot project that was presented on the amendment which again, donation bins. Tonight is first and second reading by title. And to stop that activity on our territory for the reading by title only. Monsieur Thibodeau. Thank you, Worship. Bylaw P-3, a bylaw relating to donation bins in the city of Yap. I so move first reading by title only. Thank you. Move by Councillor Tibodeau, seconded by Councillor Asano. On the question. No question. All those in favor say aye. Contrary reminded nay. Carried. In first reading by title only, we'll proceed with second reading. Once again, Monsieur Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw P3, a bylaw relating to donation bins in the city of Yet. I move in second reading by title only. Thank you. Move by title only, second reading by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Zonor on the question. One question, Monsieur Thibodeau. When I read it, on page 639, Article 17.2, it says there could be a revocation of a license after a, a warning of 10 days. Will there be a warning before? 
Is you see Mara? Yes. The practice is always to proceed with warning first. Our motto is to educate, educate, educate before we, uh, I agree with that, but it was not indicated in the text. So I was wondering if it, if it was uh, being practiced. We are cautious. We would like to have uh, education. Thank you. No more question. All those in favor of the resolution say yes. Contrary minded, nay. Carry the second reading by title only. And this is the end of the agenda, except the dear four minutes. It, inquiries but notice me sorry sorry notice of motion any notices of motion no fine Mr. Cormier, Cormier. Start with you my mandate is coming to an end my term i would like to thank citizens of Dieppe especially from Ward 2, to have allowed me to serve the residents of Dieppe uh, for nine years. And I also want to thank the councils with which I worked for nine years to accomplish what I think are major products for the city of Dieppe. Like, uh, the marsh, for instance, I hope I get old enough to see that if we can put pavement on it without having to do underneath it. Uh, and uh, the Bahama Street that needed a facelift. So thank you for all those who have helped me during these nine years. So I wish good luck to the candidates for the next election in May 2021. Thank you, Mr. Comier. In my own name, I will do it at the last meeting. I, I don't want everybody to start crying. So, Councillor Asano now. Thank you, Your Worship. I wanted to say that I already see a big difference, Mr. Sima. I want to thank you for all the work that you do, but there's still a few things that we have to do. And I'm talking about the letter of all the bins the, for clothing on the middle street for Example, you've made a big difference, and I want to wish good luck to good luck to all the candidates for the next election. Especially good luck to five women, and I'm so proud to see five women. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Tibodo. I have nothing this evening. So, Monsieur Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. Again, on the donation bid, the one at Amiro and Fox Creek, one remained. Were we able to contact with the owner of that bin? And when do they think to they would come to get it? Your Worship, it's a bin that is on the provincial property. It's up to them to do a follow-up, they were notified. And in another place, it took a few weeks, so we'll continue to follow up. Thank you. That's it? Yes. Thank you. Monsieur Berido. Thank you, Worship. I don't have much to say, except to encourage the people. We're all 
involved in the municipal election. And let's hope that COVID will not stop us from uh, getting at the election on May the 10th. But the word I'd like to say tonight is encourage the people to come and vote for your councillors. They are your councillors with the mayor who manage the assets of the city. They want to make a life beautiful for everyone. I encourage the people to really do everything possible to vote next May. Thank you. Ms. Leboutier. I would have a few suggestions to make and while traveling in the municipality also in worship. Recently, I've received suggestion in the sector of the Aquatic Center Trail, the trail that we have there. It's very nice. Where Doreen Lelia it would be to uh, feed the ducks very good. I don't know if there is a way we could put a, a sign prohibiting it in the summer, especially because it's always bread, not to uh, give, give them food. That's one suggestion if it's not too late because I know we're looking to have signs on the trails. So it might be something to uh, to consider as different areas. Uh, so if we could uh, do something, it would be fun and nice. The bicycle uh, hydrant, we had one near the Irving station. We had one as we entered the yeah, it was removed because I think it was being vandalized on a regular basis, but I think it was the location, maybe with the new bridge that will be built, maybe it would be one place. It's in the middle of the marsh. Maybe it's a place that would we could consider for people who uh, exercise or use bicycle. And I would like to take the time and thank all the employees and those who are responsible. We have a new wet, uh, virtual with all the park and the trails. It's very nice. Congratulations for that. I don't know if the residents realize it just came out recently. And also the look, uh, the it allow a better participation. I think we will grow from that platform and it will allow us to have a better pulse of our citizen. On that, thank you, and see you next meeting. Thank you, Councillor Gadet. I will start by first congratulating the people who were involved in the new platform for the swimming pool for the reservation. It's much easier. There's still a lack in that we can only reserve once. We have to go back to reserve a second time and a third time during the week before we were able to reserve several times, but it's much easier. And I would like to talk a bit tonight. We made some uh, good decision to change the plan of the city and bylaws and these changes for better or for worse, will have repercussion. I believe for years to come, there's happy people tonight, unhappy people, live. some are unhappy. It's a part of the decision power, that the decision that must be made. All of that to say, that raises question as to the way we face these challenges especially how we describe the zones, how we manage them. And when we make decisions, especially the term that I hear often since we've undertaken these decisions is a question of uh, acquired uh, rights. 
the grandfather clause the, the, be the best way to block any intervention with a given development. And what bothers me with all that is an acquired right. Is it forever? And these rights forever? Can we allow a person who has decided I have a right in 1995 and can still remain in 2020 and 20? Uh, there should be a possibility of uh, looking at the uh, time limit uh, in which these uh, rights remain. For me and for many people, the zones give too much choices to the developer to do as he sees fit within a, zone, a given zone. And the impact of this remain consistent in the uh, project develop, and then it changes, 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 and they can do as they see fit because the zone is very large permission wise we should consider also in the zone what is the impact new development as to the people who live next to these zones i think it's important at the time as soon as somebody complains or don't accept we do they say oh it's an acquired right can't touch it It'll go ahead. It'll come back. It'll come back on the middle street and on Akadi Street. It will come back on several places in the future where people will be told it's an acquired scale, uh, right. We can't touch that. I have the impression that when a project is being developed, speaking, of, you have 40 seconds. When people purchase in a project, they should have the chance to be involved in the changes if changes uh, is helped. We have a small opening door that was done with the institutional zone change in the municipal plan. In the institutional, it, it changes in there, comes back to the council for reconsideration. We don't have that with the others. It's hard to say that maybe we should look at this for the future to be more uh, listening to the citizens who are working with this development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for an evening that I expected would be uh, longer, as uh, Councillor Gaudet said so well during the last weeks or months, really. A lot of things was, were accomplished. Uh, at the council level by with everyone's cooperation some decisions we have to live with and others we have to suffer them but the main thing is to have the best uh, interest of the community as a whole uh, at heart not by sector but the whole society i leave you on that to wish you a uh, good evening and see you next meeting of uh, the 26th of April, that will be, without a doubt, our last meeting together for at least two, two persons here. Officially, congratulations, uh, it will be uh, on December the, uh, the 10th, May the 10th, but I'll take it. Thank you for your help.